Margin fishing for big carp is one of the most exciting ways of fishing and quite often later on in the day you can catch some of the biggest residents in the lake. Fishing down the edge, see a big tail come in, looking at your flow, flies under a million mile an hour, can't help but strike like a luno, all hell breaks loose and you've got a big carp trying to drag you halfway around the lake. When hooking these big fish down the edge, it's so, so important to get your tackle right. Strong, durable tackle that's not gonna let you down. And as important, it's getting your bait right because the last thing you wanna be doing when you've got big carp in the edge is foul looking them. And this is where coarse carp really comes into its own. So I brought you onto the match lake today to show you exactly how to use it. Why pick coarse carp over some of the other ground baits that we've got in the range? And to be honest, it all comes down to the venue. So just breaking them down for you. Fine expander, coarse expander, pole mix. They're very heavily based around expanders. And what that gives you is a very cloudy mix. So if you go into a venue where they need a little bit more encouragement to come in the edge, those mixes are absolutely brilliant because they cloud up a lot more. And that's what a lot of it is when it, you're fishing in shallow water. Sometimes they need the water to cloud to give them the confidence of coming in. But when you go into a heavily stocked venue or a really prolific venue, like here at Larford, the fish are more than willing to come in the edge. So that's where coarse carp comes into its own. To be honest, I wanted a mix that I could do everything with. So in our last video that we done, that's on YouTube, it was all about method feeder fishing. A lot of these commercial venues, they've got bait limits. And what I didn't want was one ground bait for the edge, one ground bait for the pole, and then one ground bait for my method feeder because I haven't really got enough. So I had a big hand in developing coarse carp and that's exactly what it was about. A lot of the places that I went to, I was fishing a method feeder early and then I wanted to fish in the edge. So developed a bait that you could do both with. Now, my little routine, when I get to the bank, I always mix my ground bait up first and I know there's loads of videos out there, but you'll be able to see with the way that I do it, I don't try and rush anything. I don't do any measuring. It's easy, it's that old adage, you can always add more water to it. So with my ground bait, I like mixing it up on the dry side because again, depending on how the day's going, I'd rather feed my ground bait a little bit drier to start with because I want to get them coming in the peg. Then, if I've got lots of fish coming in my peg, all I've got to do is just add a bit more water to dampen it down a little bit. Now, one little tip when it comes to mixing up, you know, more than a kilo of ground bait, I like to use multiple buckets. Really, a kilo, a kilo and a half of ground bait in one bucket is perfect. If you start trying to put too much in, when you're mixing it, it gets hard work. Some of it gets a little bit damper than and other bits are a little bit drier. So just a couple of buckets when it comes to mixing it. So as soon as I get to my peg, open my ground bait up because it's going to take a little bit of time. So my kilo in that bucket and then another kilo in this bucket because we're fishing down the edge today. I know these fish like eating so I fully expect to feed it all. But again, during your, your match, your pleasure session, you know, you start off with one kilo. If it turns out really good, you can always mix up a little bit more. So I'm just going to pull my sleeves up. Again, referencing our method feeder video I mix it exactly the same on the dry side to start with and you can always tinker it throughout the day you know don't feel like you're trying to get it perfect in 35 seconds just take a little bit of time with it so for those that haven't seen um, the method video one thing that you'll notice when you mix in this is it sounds like gravel so I'm literally just going to stir it around and you'll be able to hear you can hear it it's real crunchy it's got nice big particles in it so that's perfect now what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the dry mix just so you can see the particle size and i'll show you you'll be able to see the difference in color as soon as you start adding some water to it so that's the mix on the dry side 
you'll be able to see there's loads of big particles in it. And when you're method feeder fishing and when you're edge fishing, having them particles in it is really, really important. So that's how it looks on the dry side. And then as I'm mixing it up, you'll be able to see now it's a totally different colour. A lot of those bigger particles, they just blend in and it's just such a lovely mix. So take your time with it. So again, don't try and just get it right within 35 seconds, you know. You don't catch any more fish if you add a bit of water at a time or you just add it in one hit. Again, with your expander base mixes, those mixes will take on a lot more water than this mix. So I've always found, to be honest, once I've mixed this, you're always better just adding little bits of water at a time. When it comes to mixing fine expander, coarse expander, pole mix, those three especially, you can put loads of water in and never you know, worry about ruining the mix. But when you're mixing your coarse carp, just mix it a little bit and often. Try and keep it on the dry side. And then when you're fishing, depending on how it's going, you can keep it dry. Again, if them fish need that little bit more encouragement to come in the peg. But then last 25 minutes, last half hour, all of a sudden they're starting to come in. You can just dampen your mix up in your bucket and just start feeding that. And that keeps them pinned to the bottom. It doesn't waft up as much. So that is how you mix, of course. Now. When it comes to your margin fishing, the most important part is priming your peg. So feeding it and getting the fish there. You're not going to go down there and just drop a rig in and catch one. You've got to get the fish in your peg. And the only way you can attract them into your peg is feeding bait. Now, this is the one part of any of your peg on your commercial venues where, if in doubt, feed a little bit more bait. The fish are used to coming in, especially the latter part of your match or your session. On a lot of the venues, some venues sort of frown upon it, you know, try and not get you to throw your bait in. But over the years of people doing it, pack up, after your day, what do you do with your bait? Just throw it in the edge. So the fish are used to coming in and looking for that bait. How you prime it in terms of what time depends on the conditions, the venue, on a match, how well you've drawn, when you think the fish are going to come in. But that is very much venue dependent. But here today at Larford, it's a brilliant venue. So my pot that I'm gonna use to feed is 200 mil. But with your big pots that come on your pole, normally you've got two or three sizes. And this is sort of the medium sized pole pot. I'd rather use one a little bit smaller, especially when you're feeding bigger volumes, because it's a little bit kinder on your pole as well. Whereas don't try and cram loads in. You might as well just feed once more uh, time. But it's nice if you've got a measurement, again, when you go back to that uh, venue, be it a match or a pleasure session, whatever work best, you can use that as a rough guide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed three pots to start with. And I always like here putting a little bit of corn in and a few dead maggots. They're inert bait, so they're just gonna lie on the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do, put me a bit of corn in um, and a few dead maggots, and then just top me pot up with me loose ground bait. Now what's important, when you're doing this, is you don't want to push it down too hard, just gently compress it. That's all you need to do. Now, the biggest tip I can give you when it comes to feeding large volumes of bait is where am I going to feed it? So with my tape, which I've put on, so that's my marker here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place the pole pot on the water. That's where I want to fish. Now, I don't want to feed my bait there because when the fish start coming in, I've had a big volume of bait, because you're fishing away from the bank in a little bit, the fish naturally want to blow the bait up the peg. So as long as the slope is not too steep, which it's not here, I'm just going to feed it probably 10 or 12 inches down slope. And then hopefully we get the fish come in, eat in here. And then when I go in, I can start feeding exactly where I want to fish. So just rest my pole pot on the water, turn it upside down and literally just falls out so that's one so again a few bits of corn a few dead maggots and then top it up with my loose ground bait just gently pat it on your pole pot again take your time when you're doing this make sure your poles put together correctly because you've got a big weight on the end of it so you don't want to put any unnecessary strain on your joints again just turn it over see there it just falls down lovely 
that's the second pot so literally one more pot and one little tip as well is look at the conditions that will give you um, a massive help if it was bright and flat calm today the fish they can be a little bit spooky when it comes to catching them in shallow water but when you go out on a day like today we've got a lovely breeze blowing down the lake but the most important thing is it's dark in the sky and all that's going to do is give the fish a little bit more confidence so if you've gone to a venue and you've had a brilliant day caught plenty of big fish in the edge and then you go back you know to the same uh, peg and all of a sudden it's not as good one of the biggest things is looking up in the sky and I guarantee you the days when you don't catch many when they can be funny down the edge is the days when it's bright and flat calm but when it's overcast when it's windy when you get a bit of rain on the water those can be some of your best days for catching them in the edge. I never get bored of that bite. So that is a brilliant start. We primed our peg and honestly within four minutes they were going mad on it. So I let them eat a bit of the bait. It's important to let them settle down. You don't want to just, as soon as you see them, you think that's a lot of bait. So I've let them eat it a little bit, but they're still tailing up. So let it calm down for probably 15 minutes. But what that's telling me is what pole pot size to start on. And the fact that I've seen so many down there, just started off on our large pot, literally fed me bait, had a few little indications, and it's important to wait for a proper clean underbite and then strike, and they're on. So this is a brilliant start. Absolutely love proper margin carp fishing. Look at that for a fish. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning, stunning carp. When you're catching big fish down the edge, try and give you a little bit of advice when it comes to looking after them especially when you've netted them because sometimes you catch some monsters and they can, can be quite difficult to control so my little thing that i do just grab the sp spreader block rather than your landing net pole that way you're not going to snap it especially if you hook a great big one so lift it up from the spreader block and then i'm going to put it in between my legs and then completely close my legs so from that point there hold it lift it up and completely close my legs now he can wriggle around as much as he wants, but he's safe. He can't hurt himself. He's not going to donk himself on my foot plate. He's not going to be banging himself on the box. And because I like using a big, deep land in the head, especially when I'm targeting the edge, catching them great big ones, you need a big land in the head. So what I like to do is lift it up from the mesh. So you'll see me, I lift it up, but I'm not touching the rig. There's no tightness in the rig. So again, if he flips out a little bit, I can just lower it by holding me landing that head. So keep your rig nice and slack, lift up and then re-cradle him. And then I can see my hook. Just grab me disgorger. As soon as he's flipping out a little bit, just let the rig go and open your legs and then but he's protected, he can't hurt himself. So again, just cradle the fish. And then there with me to scourge up, pop him out and he's, he's safe. He can wriggle around as much as he wants. Little thing like that, you wanna be looking after him. So thank you, Mr. Carp, lovely first fish. Hook another one now. I'll be seeing you soon, Mr. Carp. Pole pots and your big pot, it's all about working out how much bait, the volume of bait do you need to feed 
to get one carp to come in the peg, hook it cleanly, and then start again. So I've got four pole mounted pots, my medium, my large, my paste, and my XL pot. That gives me four different pole pot options. Some days, when it's really good, you might only need to feed a medium pot or a large pot. Other days, you have to feed more bait, and that's when your paste, your XL pot comes into it. But other days, you have to use your cupping kit and your big pole pot, your 200 mil pole pot. You have to feed that to get a carp to come in. It's all about working out how much do you need to feed on the given day to get a carp to come in. Brilliant start, fish first chuck. Looking down, there's loads still in my peg, so I'm gonna stick with me large part at the moment i know they're still there i haven't got to attract them in hook bait wise double corn at the moment been to laugh at a bit in the past double corn's always been a good hook bait so filling my pot up just stir me uh, ground bait overfill my pot and then it's just one gentle compression pop my bait box down give me elastic a bit of a pull pull nicely together and then here, it's a case of just turning your pot over and you don't want your bait to fall out. That's your compression. And then come into your peg, pot under the water, slowly lift up, little fish I think, donked it then, and then just gently drag your rig on top of your bait. What's really difficult when you're doing this is trying to pick the cleanest bite, anything lightning quick, anything that almost scares you, that's what you want to be striking at. Anything slow and deliberate, just leave it well, well alone. Other hook baits that I brought with us today are dead maggots and worms. Worms are a brilliant, brilliant hook bait and so are dead maggots. So I'd say when it's harder, dead maggots, they're really good. But if you're getting a lot of small fish problems, that's when your worms can be really, really good. So looking down, I can still see them there. So that's telling me, pot-wise, I don't need to change. I just get a bit excited when I'm playing them. So take my time. Just try and keep that gentle pressure on it all of the time. Just making, whether to make that decision, sometimes you'll hook them and they want to run off. That's why I've got my pole there and my crook. So just nice, gentle pressure. The elastic's doing its job. I don't need to use my puller kit at the moment. Plenty of stretch in that elastic. And that's the thing, when you, when you get a real nice elastic like Red Hydro, it just does all the work for you. You never feel like you're gonna lose a fish because it's always stretching. Just take your time, a big, big fish. Normally when they get a mouthful of air, that's it, then they pop up. So, there, lovely carp, hooked perfect in the top of the mouth. And then when I'm doing this bit, I always look down and I can immediately I can see another fish because I'm concentrating on the fishing, but I wanna try and gather as much information about the edge. Are they there, aren't they there? So then I can decide, ready for my next feed, what to feed. Lovely carp. Lovely fish. Smacking the top of the mouth, he were never coming off. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Kerr. Gearing up right for these big margin fish is so important, so I want to talk you through my setup. So starting off with our elastic, I've opted for Red Hydro, but what's important with your elastic is picking one, and this is very much venue dependent where you go, how hard the carp actually pull when you hook them. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, big heavy elastic, you're bullying the fish. That's not the case. One of the biggest reasons why you get broke when you're fishing in the edge is when you hook one, they're big fish, they wanna run off at a million mile an hour. And what happens is they lock your elastic out and that's when you get snapped. When there's no more stretch in your elastic, your rig either snaps or your hook clamp snaps. Whereas if you use a proper strong elastic, what happens is when you hook them and they're running off, they can't lock you out because there's always that stretch in your elastic. So don't think strong elastic means bullying fish. 
it's having that stretch even when they're really pulling that little bit more stretch will stop you with breakages and then moving down onto my main line choice here 022 main lines absolutely fine if you was going somewhere where they really pulled and you really have got hang on for dear life then just step your main line choice up i think a lot of the time when it comes to your margin fish is getting them feeding once they're feeding and when they're confident they're not really line and rig shy and then moving down to my flow float choice is important i think and again a bit more technical but less than two foot and you don't want a too long a flow because i don't want quite a long flow when i'm fishing in less than two foot of water because my floats out of proportion to the depth that i'm fishing in quite a short little flow fiberglass stem that helps if it's rubbing around your land in there and again it's them big fish you don't want to be using wire that bends you know nice strong robust flow two mil tip again you're going to get plenty of indications in that shallow water what i spoke about before you do not want to be foul hooking any fish so you don't want a little light bristle that's going to go under at everything because if you think all oh, that was a clean bite and you foul hook one you're just going to end up in disaster and then moving further down the rig if you stick to this rule of thumb you won't go too far wrong so i have a bulk of six number eight cubes or stots and i would say between less than um 12 inches deep i think sort of a 12 inches to say 20 inches a three inch hook length is really nice when you're going above that use a four inch hook length so i've got a three inch hook length of 020 down to a 12 super lwg a nice big strong hook personally i like a spade version when you're going above um two foot then a slightly longer float that aids a bit of stability and instead of having it just as a bulk if it's in and around two foot a bulk on top of a four inch hook length is perfect but you do get some edges where it might be three foot three and a half foot right next to the banking and then i'd rather use a slightly longer flow but instead of having it as a bulk just set it up as a bulk and one dropper again six number eight seven number eight um as a bulk one number eight dropper and then a four inch hook length that's just through the experience sticking to that you're not going to go a million mile wrong ground bait is working perfectly I'm getting the fish coming my peg I'm getting signs on my flow every single time I feed but I'm getting clean bites striking and I'm hooking the fish in the mouth but what would I do if I started foul hooking them so the way we mixed our ground bait up this morning just mixed it up dampened it as we were going I've not over wetted it so my ground bait at the moment is what I'd say still relatively on the dry side and as long as I'm not foul hooking fish that is perfect like that because it's going to give a bit more cloud when it falls down and also when the fish come in the peg and turn it's going to puff up a little bit more and because my peg is relatively shallow i need that attraction of the ground bait to keep the fish coming back in and that's why i'm always looking down as i'm fishing are the fish still coming in my peg yes i don't need to change anything but if foul hooking was becoming a problem the nice thing about this ground bait is you can change the consistency of it. So if that was the case, the first time you do this, I'm not gonna do it to my whole mix. I'm just gonna do a little bit of it at a time. So take a little bit out in your bait box, just add a bit of water with your fingers, a little bit more awkward when it's on your legs, but when it's on your side tray, you can just take your water, pop it in, and then literally just stirring it around with your fingers you'll see it changed the consistency really really quickly and what 
by adding more water, what this does is it makes the ground bait a lot heavier. It doesn't, I'd say it's not as attractive to the fish because it sinks a little bit quicker and it's less likely to puff up as much off the bottom. But this is be the one thing that I would do, sort of my first port of call, if I was foul hooking a few fish. And now just by dampening it down, when you lift it up, you can just, you can feel how much more it weighs and how much more it binds. And that's one of the biggest things with your edge fishing is finding that balance between, you need to be able to feed enough to keep the fish coming in the peg, but not foul looking them. Because if you have too many fish in your peg, you've got more chance of foul looking them. But likewise, if you don't feed enough bay, you've got as much chance of foul looking some. It's, it's always trying to find that happy medium where you're going in, you feed your bait, you get an odd sign. Again, you're not foul looking them. All of the time you're sitting there, it doesn't matter if you're getting an odd little liner, that's a good thing, because you can't catch a fish if it's not in the peg. But you're getting an odd little sign, then it finds your up bait, whack, and they're in the mouth. That's the art of your margin fishing. I will never get bored of that bite. So a little tip when you're playing them, sometimes the big ones, they trick you a little bit. You hook them and they sort of waddle about and you break down and you think, oh, yep, yeah, that one's under control. And then it waddles off, waddles up a bit more. And then before you know it, you're trying to squeeze your pole on and they break you. So just take your time, you know, keep your pole together and just tire it out you know if you feel like you've hooked a great big one there's no rush to break down at your top kit and then when you feel like you've been playing it for a little bit you can come down and break down now if they run off a million mile an hour instead of putting your pole low like that if you actually lift it up and change the angle that you're pulling at quite often they're kite out of the way so pushing it out because I've got some sort of floating lilies down my left. And just a nice ship back. I feel like it's nicely under control. Again, my little roost. So if it does, if I misjudge it and it starts to run off, I know exactly where it is. But these fish have absolutely loved this coarse carp today. It's such a good versatile mix. They're not coming in. You can keep it nice and dry. If there's lots of fish coming in the peg, just changing the consistency. And again, where you've got those venues with a ground bait limit and you want to be fishing a method feeder and in the edge, it's just the one mix does all. Just rolled over the line a little bit. So just keep my pole low. I don't want to be pulling him up if he's wrapped around the pole rig. Just again, just nice gentle pressure. The elastic's doing its job. It's always stretching. You never feel like you're gonna pull out of one. And it just helps you get less breakages as well. So it's been a brilliant day at Larford here. You always get fantastic sport. And when the conditions are like this, the fish, they just absolutely love feeding in the edge. You've got to come out and, and have a go at it. Cause it's so exciting. So, you see, he's, I thought he was going to be tiring himself out, but just take your time. They're big, big fish. You don't need loads of them. Normally, when they get a mouthful of air, that's normally the telltale sign that they're sort of ready for netting. But just gentle pressure, you see there, just popped up, mouthful of air. So, I wouldn't have thought it'd be too much longer and he will be ours. But been an absolutely fantastic day. Plenty of bites. I think they said they shut at six. I will be here at five past six. Julian will be going mad at me, but hopefully you've enjoyed our few little tips when it comes to using coarse carp down the edge. Go out there, give it a go, and I will see you on our next video. Cheers for watching. Ah, it's a big fish.